I'm Mark Golub, and in the news, some rather harsh words coming out of an Orthodox rabbinic group aimed at the Reform Movement. On March 9th, a group of around 30 Reform leaders, led by the president of the URJ, Union for Reformed Congregations, uh, Union for Reformed Judaism, Rabbi Rick Jacobs, met with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas and other leaders of the Palestinian Authority in Ramallah. The JTA, the Jewish Telegraphic Agency, quotes Rick Jacobs as saying he was impressed with Abbas, quote, clear and unequivocal commitment to the two-state solution, and that Mr. Abbas indicated he is frustrated with the lack of progress on the peace process or even the existence of ongoing negotiations, to which Rick Jacobs added, I share that frustration. Well, one Orthodox rabbinic group known as the CJV, the Coalition of Jewish Values, has now come out with strong criticism of the reform movement for its friendly meeting with Mahmoud Abbas and for, quote, presuming to tell Israel how to protect the lives and livelihood of Israeli Jews. The CJV pointed out that Mahmoud Abbas continues to incite and reward bloodshed. And in a related story, the Israeli Knesset recently passed legislation banning anyone who publicly calls for a boycott of Israel from entering the state of Israel. In response, the URJ denounced this new law, calling it anti-democratic. And the CJV has been highly critical of this URJ position. Well, to address this issue, I'm so very pleased to be joined by two individuals on our JBS phones. First, the director of the CJV, the Coalition of Jewish Values, Rabbi Yaakov Menken, who's also co-founder and editor of Cross Currents, an online journal of Orthodox Jewish thought and opinion. And Yaakov, thank you so much for joining us. I'm delighted to be with you. Thank you. And I'm also so pleased to be joined once again by a major columnist in the Jewish world and a longtime leader of the Reform Movement, Rabbi Eric Yaffe, who for more than 25 years served himself as president of the URJ and now holds the position of URJ President Emeritus. Eric is Rick J Jacobs' immediate predecessor. And before assuming the position of URJ president, Eric Yaffe headed ARTSA, the Reform Movement's Israel Initiative. Eric is not, however, formally representing the URJ or the Reform Movement on this edition of In the News. He is speaking solely for himself. Eric, thank you as always for making time for us in JBS. Happy to be with you, Mark. Okay, Yaakov, let me begin with you. First, just tell us, how old is the Coalition of Jewish Values? To be completely honest with you, about a month. A month, okay. And uh, how did it come into being? Uh, what actually happened was that there was a group of rabbis who had been discussing on and off how Every time one sees uh, a, a representative of the Jewish community in the media on any one of these issues of public concern, it always seems to represent one perspective, and that there needed to be an uh, expression for all of us rabbis who felt differently. And the first the suggestion was, well, we need people writing more op-eds, and then it was, well, we need to form a group. And... Lo and behold, we ended up forming a group. Okay. Uh, I assume... And then all, I should say that all the rabbis involved here are, uh, there are seven of us who are at the core, all of whom have uh, decades of experience in the pulpit or in teaching, and uh, we've been joined so far by, by, by several others, and we're increasing by the day. Okay. Uh, I... To simply uh, <laughs> take a different viewpoint. Yaakov, I assume, however, the CJ, uh, the... CRJ, what is it? The CJV is, right. com well, is, is, com values. is composed of Orthodox rabbis. Correct. Okay. Is it also fair for me to say your organization is on the margins of Orthodox Jewish life? No, I wouldn't say so. 
meaning to say that all the rabbis who are represented are, are fully in the mainstream. We have RCA, which is to say the more YU modern orthodox circle. We have the more right-wing traditional circle, but all of us have long careers. In other words, you know, if you want to say marginal, it would be marginal in that, well, we're a relatively new organization and few have heard of us so far. But uh, as far as who we are and what we represent, uh, we've already been called a prominent Orthodox organization for, for no reason that I can figure other than the fact that the seven rabbis involved, all of whom have, uh, have long careers in the public sphere. Okay. Are any of them in the modern Orthodox movement? Very much so. Who? We have RCA members, Rabbi Doe Fisher, Rabbi Stephen Przensky, um, but wait, Rabbi, Rabbi Prezen Yom Rabbi Schoenfeld, there, there's several of the members are RCA members as well. I understand. Rabbi Prusensky is not normally said that he does not normally self-identify as a as a member of, a, of you know the Avi Weiss Shlomo Riskin uh, uh, Yitz Greenberg modern orthodoxy. Oh no no no, we're not talking. They, they are actually what we now the, the group that's calling itself the Open Orthodox, Avi Weiss. Um, that's not you. Which is, you know, there, 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 there's a whole debate about open orthodoxy, which I, I will assume is not our topic for today. Exactly. But, uh, you know, they, they identify themselves as orthodox, but none of the mainstream orthodox organizations actually agree with them. Okay. And then how do you position CJV politically on the spectrum today? It's a hard question to answer precisely. I, I Small C conservative, I suppose, right. for the most part. Okay. Yaakov, you know that the reform movement and the URJ represents more American Jews than does any other Jewish organization in this country. And the URJ does speak for the majority of American Jews who are affiliated with synagogues. I want to understand what troubles you most about the reform movement's position on the issue of a two-state solution, and Rick Jacobs taking a group to meet with Mahmoud Abbas. Okay, there's a, there, there's a couple of issues there, obviously. Um, I, I don't believe that our, um, you know, you, had, you began at the outset saying, you know, we criticize them harshly. The reality is that they criticized Israel very harshly. Uh, which began with the uh, anti-BDS law, which the current head of the uh, reform movement called anti-democratic. Although it passed in Israel's parliament, which is a democratic body, of course, by a large margin. Uh, it's also hardly unusual for any democratic country to bar entry to foreign nationals whose presence is considered detrimental by that country. Uh, BDS is a movement designed to destroy Israel, and therefore, uh, for Israel to say we don't welcome foreign nationals who are encouraging the destruction of Israel is hardly an unusual stance. And yet, the reform movement called that anti-democratic. And then it went over to, to have this meeting with Mahmoud Abbas, where... Uh, apparently, the, uh, according to the reports, I mean, obviously none of us were there. We can only judge from what it said in the uh, JTA report, etc. But the whole issue of incitement and lack of peace was relegated to an afterthought, and incredible credulity was, was given to uh, President Abbas's remarks when President Abbas himself has called upon Muslims to make sure that the Jews are not able to defile Muslim holy sites with their filthy Jewish feet. So this being the case, this is what we were coming out against. Okay. Eric, you've been very patient. You've heard something about the CJV, and you've heard um, Yaakov speak about two issues. One, the URJ reaction to the Knesset law, banning those from entering Israel who are pro-BDS, and then you've heard him criticize uh, the reform movement and Rick Jacobs for Rick Jacobs' remarks after meeting with Mahmoud Abbas. What would you say to Yaakov? Well, those, those are, are two issues. On, on the, the boycott law, what I would say is it was, unfortunately, it was a bad law. It was a foolish law. 
You know, it was a, a law that was uh, harmful to Israel's security and was not, uh, as I'm sure it might make a note, just the uh, URJ that, that uh, spoke against the law. The American Jewish Committee uh, came out against the law. The ADL came out against the law. These are mainstream uh, uh, Jewish organizations that shared the same concerns that the reform movement had. Now, look, if someone is, is really a danger and poses a security threat to Israel, uh, such a person can be barred from entering Israel, and no law is needed for that. I mean, under existing law, that that uh, has been possible. The problem with the new law, first of all, is that it does not um, focus only on BDS. That was the impression Rabbi Mencken gave, and that really is not true. Uh, it's a law that appears to allow Israel to bar whole categories of people whose only crime is that they take sides on the settlement issue, which is an immensely controversial issue within Israel itself. Yes. So, for example, if, if you had announced that you were opposed to Israel's settlement policy and you intended to refrain from you know, visiting settlements and maybe asking others to do the same, in theory you could be barred under this law from entering Israel. Now, look, there are many people to whom Israel should be saying, come visit, see us, meet our citizens, and then you'll decide, you know, what, what you think about momentous matters. Instead, what Israel is doing is sending these people away and is creating an image of itself as a country that does not um, respect fundamental democratic values and is going to get involved in examining the thought processes of everybody who uh, wishes to cross its borders. Okay, I, Eric, I don't think that advances Israel's security in any way. Okay, Eric, before you move on to the second issue, Yaakov, you've heard what Eric feels about this. Do you disagree with him in some way? Well, according to all of the news reports, and again, I, I have not actually read the full text myself, but everything that has been described about this law says that it says anyone who is in favor of a boycott of Israel or its settlements. It's not simply being uh, opposed to the settlement policy, but actually encouraging boycotts. And that is a different story. And that is uh, where the line is drawn. Eric? Well, what's a boycott? I, 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 it, it specifically permits those who say that even if they oppose BDS, uh, but do not want to go to or um, be involved in, you know, commercial transactions uh, with the settlements, that on those grounds alone, they can be barred from Israel. So, again, somebody who says, I'm opposed to the settlement policy, I'm not going to go to the settlements, I'm not going to visit the settlements, I think that's the right thing to do. Such a person could be barred under this law. Uh, the, the law specifically permits that. So is, is that an appropriate democratic policy that furthers Israel's interests and security? And I would suggest to you it is not. I'm against BDS. Let's be very clear Absolutely. on that. I suppose that uh, emphatically will continue to do so. Anti-BDS measures are one thing. This goes far beyond uh, uh, BDS and gets into other much more dangerous areas for the Jewish state. Okay, one quick question, then we move on to the second issue. You know, what Yaakov was saying was that this was a law passed by the Israeli Knesset, the duly elected Israeli Knesset, and that therefore there was something that made him uncomfortable about the fact that the URJ would, first of all, call it undemocratic, but also that the URJ or American Jewry in any way would not respect decisions made internally by the Israeli government. What would you say, Eric? Do American Jews have the right to speak out on matters relating to Israel, even when they disagree with Israel's government? And the answer is, of course, they do. They don't need anybody's permission. Uh, first of all, they have that right as American citizens. Um, but, but more fundamentally, Zionism is the national liberation movement of the entire Jewish people. Uh, you know, Zionism appeals to Jews everywhere and asks them to ask them to support Israel and to visit Israel and to consider living in Israel and to identify with Israel's destiny. 
So, you know, Israel and American Jews need each other. We're fortunate to be living at a time when there is an Israel. But if you want me involved as a Jew, that also means you need to listen when I have real concerns about Israel's values and policies. And uh, so do I have a right to express those concerns? And the answer is I absolutely do. And it would be a terrible mistake and a misunderstanding of Zionism if that were to mean that, by the way, we're invited to the party, to the Israel party, the Zionist party, but any disagreement that you have, uh, you have to be quiet about. I just, I don't accept that view of what Zionism is. Okay. Yaakov, any comment? Well, I, I would, I, first of all, I would comment that on, when it comes to the issue of, of, of boycott of the settlements, uh, that, that Rabbi Afi has essentially agreed with me, that it, the law is about refusing to do transactions with the settlements, which is, of course, basically a boycott. Um, but also, as far as, uh, I, I don't believe that Rabbi Afi responded to you on the issue of, you know, this was a democratic action by a democratic Knesset. To call it anti-democratic simply plays into the hands of Israel's worst enemies who want to say that Israel is not a democracy, which, of course, it is. And so that was very, that's a very dangerous statement in its own right, and it's inappropriate. As far as our ability to tell Israel what's good for it, I do believe that that is very muted for those of us who live in America. As much as the reform movement tries to attach itself to Israel, it has a vanishingly small presence in Israel and very little footprint in terms of people's relatives. I mean, I have a brother-in-law, I have nephews and nieces living there, I have teachers living there, and other friends and relatives living there. And so, of course, for me, there is an intense personal connection when we're talking about issues of personal safety of Jews living in Israel. Uh, I do feel that our ability as Americans has to be a little bit muted when it comes to security, and we're talking to people who are facing the dangers themselves on a nightly basis. Okay. Eric? I would, I would just like to say, I have a whole branch of my family that lives in Israel. I have Holocaust survivors in my family who live in Israel. So, you know, the notion that somebody else is going to tell me that, well, my personal connections give me, uh, you know, certain rights or whatever, put me in a position you're not in, is simply offensive. Um, uh, oh, I'm we, saying we're in the same boat. We're both in America. We don't really get to dictate policy to Israel, is my point. Eric? We get to express our views uh, about Israel's destiny and Zionism's future. We have an obligation to do so. The democratically elected government of Israel, which, by the way, <laughs> obviously population includes non-Jews, uh, Arabs, Christians, and so on. They can listen to us or not. Um, uh, but they do have an obligation to hear what we have to say, and we have an obligation to express our views. Okay. Eric, I want to move on to the second issue. Eric, you've appeared countless times on JBS, and you've had a pretty consistent message that while you have strong support of the concept of the two-state solution and what you call a cold peace, you've used the word divorce, is what we're trying to do, an amicable divorce. You've also said that you feel the current Palestinian leadership under Mahmoud Abbas has not proven itself to be a serious peace partner, and you don't expect a peace solution anywhere in the immediate future. So independent of the CJV's criticisms, how do you react to Rick Jacobs' very lovely words about Mr. Abbas and his identifying Mr. Abbas and, uh, as someone who really wants peace and even saying that he shares Mahmoud Abbas's frustration? Well, first of all, I can't speak for Rabbi Jacobs. He needs to speak for himself. Uh, I, I certainly identify with his commitment to a two-state solution, uh, how he evaluates what Mr. Abbas said about the two-state solution. You know, again, I'm not in a position to say. The heart of the issue, uh, it seems to me, was uh, the meeting itself. I mean, R Rabbi Mencken, uh, in, his, uh, in the statement of his organization, questioned whether or not such a meeting was uh, uh, appropriate. And, um, you know, apart from the, the substance of the statements, which we can enter into more if you would like, 
Um, my, my view on the meeting is very clear. Of course the, uh, the meeting is appropriate. There's absolutely no problem with such a meeting. President Trump uh, just called uh, Mr. Abbas, had what was described as a very friendly uh, uh, conversation with him, and then invited him to come to Washington. Uh, so I'm, I'm not uh, aware uh, of, of uh, CJV having issued a statement uh, attacking uh, President Trump, because we all understand that uh, the current political realities are such that there's ongoing contact between the United States and um, the Palestinian Authority and between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. Uh, Israel's uh, leaders meet with the officials of the Palestinian Authority every day. Uh, the state of Israel has this contact because the PA uh, administers most of the West Bank, which is a blessing for Israel, and the PA security forces cooperate closely with the IDF in providing security for the territories and in fighting terrorism. That's a reality, despite all of the political differences, which are very real and continue to uh, exist. Oh. Now, if Israel were to break relations with the PA, that would be a different reality. Different for the reform movement, different for everyone else, we would have to reconsider. But when Israel has an ongoing relationship with the, the PA, there is no reason in the world not to meet with Mr. Abbas. And Rabbi Jacob said very specifically in his statement, we don't agree with him on many things. What's appropriate for President Trump and for Israeli officials is also appropriate for the reform movement. Okay. The only thing that sort of tweaked me, uh, and, and I agree with you 100% that there's nothing inappropriate about Jewish groups meeting with the Palestinian Authority, with Mahmoud Abbas. I was surprised, Eric, that Rick Jacobs would use the word, I identify with Abbas's frustration. Because it suggests, it seems to me, that what Rick Jacobs was saying was that the lack of progress in terms of a peace process really was Israel's fault. And that as Abbas was frustrated that Israel isn't willing to meet, Rick Jacobs is saying, yeah, I share that frustration about Israel's failure. What was your sense of that? Well, I mean, again, obviously I wasn't there. That's not the way I took it. Uh, I uh, took it to mean that uh, Abbas is committed to two states. The reform movement is committed to two states. There's been a great deal of discussion now on the whole two-state question. It, it, is it a good idea? Is it not a good idea? And uh, all of a sudden we're involved in a debate about fundamentals, which were things that we agreed on, um, until very recently. When I say we, I mean the state of Israel and the United States government and much of the American Jewish community. So there is frustration on that point, and I took Rabbi Jacob's comments to be referring to this okay. issue here. Okay. By the way, our viewers should know that as much as I love having Eric on, you see him on all the time, we felt it was appropriate to call the URJ directly, which we did. We also called ARTSA directly. Unfortunately, they had no one available to represent them formally. And, of course, Eric, as a past president of URJ, and is obviously someone who is a major thinker in the reform movement, it was wonderful having him on. But I did want you to understand we did try to reach somebody formally at the URJ. Okay, Yaakov, you've heard Eric's position. What's your response? So... I do not believe it characterizes our statement correctly to simply say that we objected to the idea that there was a meeting. Not that I believe that a meeting is always appropriate with just anyone. I think that Rabbi Yaffe would probably agree with me that when these Naturi Karta idiots go over to meet with Ahmadinejad in Iran, they're not helping anybody in the Jewish people. Uh, it, it doesn't help us when what we're actually accomplishing is giving cover to terrorism or antipathy towards Jews. Is, it, is this supposed to be a benefit to us? Did it help the Jewish people? That, of course, has to be the, the prime consideration for any Jewish religious organization. And what we objected to was the tenor of, of the chat. This friendly conversation in which, as you already pointed out, uh, there seemed to be an acceptance that Israel is somehow the intransigent party when it comes to accomplishing a two-state solution. 
But there is another issue, which is the fundamental lack of veracity of the things that are coming out of the Palestinian Authority and what appeared to be Rabbi Jacob's credulity. If, if I recall correctly, Rabbi Yaffe, I believe you wrote, uh, well, nearly two decades ago at this point, that Arafat had hugely disappointed you, that as someone who supported a peaceful solution, you were forced to realize that Arafat had not been telling the truth and that he was, in fact, still committed to bloodshed and mayhem when that suited his political purposes more. Uh, I believe you wrote that in 2000. Am I recalling correctly? Um, yes. And, and so this is something we've encountered with the Palestinian Authority before. And what alarmed me in particular was when Rabbi Jacobs referred to the, uh, the need to stop incitement, which was, according to the JTA reports, it was practically an afterthought. And when confronted with his issue of incitement, Rabbi Jacobs reported that Prime Minister Abbas had, President Abbas had said that he acknowledged it was a, quote, real challenge and would require an anti-incitement trilateral committee to be revived. Now, this is, again, from a man who is himself uh, talking about filthy Jewish feet and praising bloodshed in Jerusalem, according to a report uh, commissioned by the Daily Mail, which came out on Sunday. There are four schools in the Palestinian Authority. This is schools, as in four school children, named after the architect of the Munich massacre at the Munich Olympics. There are three schools named after the architect of the Coastal Road Massacre, which was the worst terrorist attack uh, in Israel history. And this is, this, is really, this, is, this is beyond incitement. This is education. The children are going to school knowing that the school is named after a person who murdered as many Jews as possible. Okay, Yaakov, let me interrupt. we only got about a minute or so left. Eric, you wind it up. Your thoughts? The fact of the matter is we are confronted with difficult political realities. Israel needs to deal with the Palestinians. The United States need to, needs to deal with the Palestinians. Somehow every effort needs to be made to find a way forward, if that's at all po uh, possible. And we've got to be able to have that discussion without every time running through a whole long list uh, uh, of the errors and the sins of the PLO, even if in every case the facts are correct. Uh, President Trump, that you have, who you have uh, praised um, fulsomely uh, in, in your publications, has made it clear that despite all the difficulties here, he's going to meet with the Palestinians and he's going to look for a way forward. In this regard, uh, uh, I support him. I believe that he's right. And uh, I believe that uh, the visit of Rabbi Jacobs, in, you know, in that sense, was uh, appropriate and, and at least potentially helps move us in that direction. Okay, gentlemen. Unfortunately, we were grabbed by the clock. The two of you are wonderful. Yaakov Menken, our first meeting with you. Thank you so much for time. I hope you come into the studio one day with Eric or without, and we'll continue the discussion. Eric, I love you so much. Thank you for always making time for us wonderfully said. And again, maybe one day you'll sit in studio with uh, Yaakov Menken and we'll continue the discussion. But I thank you both very, very much. Um, looking forward thank to you. it, Mark. Always, always good to, to be with you. Thank you. The thoughts of Rabbi Yaakov Menken, director of the CJV, the Coalition of Jewish Values, and Eric Yaffe, a columnist for the Huffington Post and the daily Israeli newspaper Haaretz. And of course, Eric is also president emeritus of the URJ, the Union for Reform Judaism, though he was only speaking for himself on this edition of In the News. My thanks, as always, to our director and program coordinator on this edition of In the News, Serge Goldberg. Great job, Serge. JBS's associate director, Dara Golub. Editors, Dennis Golan. Great job, Dennis and John McDevitt. And to the producer of In the News, Carol Lilienthal. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. Be well, my friends.